You know, it's likely we'll never know how many people we impacted in a positive way. But what we can know and have 100% perfect confidence in is this. A life lived impacting others in a positive way is a life lived well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who cares. We thank you, Lord God, that we have moments that you give us that we can pass on to others because we love them. We thank you, Father, for the positive people in our lives. We thank you for their memory. We thank you for those moments. We thank you, Lord God, that in those moments, we became just a little bit better. And Father, I would ask you that you would take those moments, call them to our minds, so that we can pass them on and possibly help somebody feel or experience or become just a little bit better. In your son's precious name we say, Amen. I already have Kleenex in my pocket, so I don't have to worry about forgetting those. Okay, that was seven words. I already made it further than I thought. <clears throat> so, because I know I'll forget this, and there's been a lot of people that have helped Gus get to today, I want to just say this at the start, because otherwise I'll completely forget but I want to thank Don for saying those kind words. I think it gives you a lot of things to think about. It's things that there's no way I could have mustered that. So I appreciate you taking time. <clears throat> um, Lindsay and Julie Johnson, Lindsay Fur is around here. Uh, she has been, um, I've been in events for about 20 years. And a number of these people, I just wanted to say thank you from the start because emotionally, you know, maybe logistically I could have figured out a way to get through everything, but emotionally to try to put, put everything together for a day like today. I just want to say thank you for their help. Um, Marie, who's, you know, there's so many people, Bobby Brantley, just all these event people that know me from years that don't know my mom and don't know my brother. Um, you know, they, they just kind of came together. So that's, that means a lot. Um, of course, my brother's family. I apologize if I don't have all this memorized. And I have to read because I realized last weekend when we were at uh, the celebration uh, for my brother in Texas, that if I make eye contact, we're going to be here all night. So forgive me if I'm not making eye contact a lot. It's a defense mechanism. Um, the Clint, thank you too. If you haven't met the Clint, then please do. He's a large man right here in the blue shirt. One of my brother's uh, very, very good friends, um, Andrew, who wasn't able to be here, and then just so many others. All of you, thank you for being here. Um, some of you are here for me. Some of you are here because you knew my brother. Some of you are here because of my mom. And some of you are here because you heard there's free food later. And that's fine. <laughs> that's okay. So, this sucks. It's no fun having to be here. It's no fun to watch mom deteriorate over years. To not live as close as you would like to your brother and his family. To have to tell your dad that his wife passed away. See, if this wasn't clear, you would have never seen that. To call your brother during his daughter's graduation weekend and tell him that his mom has passed away. To not be able to make your mom's pain go away day after day. It 
it's no fun to basically have your brother die in your arms and feel completely helpless. And it's no fun to plan two celebrations at the same time. But they were fun people. I don't know that that makes all that other stuff okay. But they were. They were full of life. They would want us to celebrate, probably more in a little bit, but definitely celebrate. They would also, if you knew mom and you knew Jeff, they would also enjoy how efficient this is doing two at the same time. <laughs> they would. It just makes sense. I mean, we have name tags with different cover colored labels that you normally see at a garage sale. There's a reason for that. If I don't do it, they will haunt me. I'm just kidding, Mason and Chloe, they are not ghosts. They would appreciate how organized things are and that most of the frames out here, hopefully you've had a chance to go down a little memory lane for mom and Jeff, were from garage sales. Because that was mom. And hence us, Jeff and I. And dad usually stayed home, so he still had to suffer though. Um, and enjoy it. It was everything. So let's make today about celebrating them and remembering how much life they gave us all. My shirt is maybe not the shirt you would expect to see at a funeral or a memorial, but that's why this is not either one of those. This is a celebration. The only reason I have this shirt is because of mom and her instilling in my brother and I at six o'clock most Saturday mornings that we needed to go to garage sales because there was something out there. If we didn't get it, somebody else would, and we had to have it. <laughs> Even though somebody else determined they did not have to have it. <laughs> so I was going through our neighborhood and I always see the garage sale signs or the sales and I saw this garage sale a street and a half away from us on Purrier, if anyone knows the neighborhood. And I saw this shirt from, I'm not kidding, 100, 100 yards away. And I, I was like, I've gotta go in there, I've gotta go check that out. And I went and I talked to this fantastic lady who was a widow and told me the story of her and her husband and two or three other couples that went to Hawaii <laughs> and they were on a Charlie Scenic Tours and they loved it so much, they bought it off the tour guides. Every one of the guys had one of these shirts. And she felt like it was finally time to let it go. And whether you believe in fate, destiny, something, after talking to her and me expressing to her how I grew up going to garage sales and just the only reason I stopped here is because I saw this, she looked at me and said, this shirt was meant for you. And I wear this shirt, as many of my friends know, <laughs> um, anywhere to celebrate, even when it's not necessarily a celebration. It's like, if we're gonna have fun, I'm wearing it. Chicago in December, I'm going there for business. Stick Charlie on, why not? Gonna have fun. Jeff also is a Jimmy Buffett fan, so I'm sure he appreciates the general um, vibe of the shirt as well. Plus it was a little obnoxious and he liked that too. So in that vein um, of celebration, um, I'd like to share just a couple of short videos to make sure that all of the things that I talked about sucking, that we can hopefully change the mindset a little bit um, and enjoy a couple of videos of, of mom that I think Jeff enjoyed and, and knew and she taught us both so much, and I think that's where both he and I, uh, we had time to, to talk um, at, the, at the funeral home, and it was two hours of us laughing and sharing stories about mom, and <laughs> 
cracked, cracked them up. I mean, we could have been out of there in 30 minutes. We knew what we were there to do, and we knew what mom's wishes were. But we were just having so much fun thinking about mom. So she loved horses, so I found this video and thought this would be nice to share. And then there's one other one that I just had to. Hey, Mom. How'd everything go, Mom? It went super. Good. All right. Your big dismount. Oh, you thought it was the battery, but it's your car. No, I'm okay. It's just that that has been out. I was ready for anything here. You see her loving husband ready to help back there? And, of course, I was filming, so I was... 10 feet away. <laughs> All right, Mom. Here's my helper. <laughs> <laughs> How was your ride? Oh, great. Great? Good? It really was. Good. Good. Yeah. All right. We'll have some lunch. <laughs> and that sums up Mom at the end, too. She didn't know that, that lady. <laughs> but she knew that lady. <laughs> that lady knew Mom. Because that's how Mom was. It didn't matter who you were. That you could tell, okay, no problem, ma'am. Oh, no, we're hugging. Okay, let's do that. That was mom. She didn't know strangers. So I've got one other video that he's going to pull up here. There it is. So mom and I embarked, usually without her consent, on many pranks. And when I saw this one, I was like, this is, this is a pretty good one, especially her first reaction. Um, but... Dozens of these. Dozens. I was doing everything I could not to blow, blow this. That's uh, almost my favorite part of the end. You gotta get rid of this. I gotta, I gotta say something here. I can't tell, I mean, if you wanna see about a dozen more of those, let me know. I can send them to you. I can do like a weekly thing. I have plenty of those between, you know, salt that wasn't Himalayan salt, but it was ghost pepper salt that Jeff gave me that I in turn turned into a prank on mom. I mean, there were so many. Um, she would, she, it was fun. Mom always made things fun. And Jeff and I, learn that from her and try to take as much advantage of that as possible. Um, so now to a little heavier, but hopefully also some nice memories along the way. Um, I'm going to share both mom and Jeff's eulogy, which I never thought I'd be doing um, at the same time because I know there's kids in here, but I'll just use the letter F you, Jeff, for not being here. Um, he just, I guess, wanted to just get, you know, get out of it. I don't know. <laughs> he, he and I talked about, he came in on a Monday. We went to the funeral home after having lunch together. And we were having so much fun telling stories about mom. I mean, Halloween, Christmas, she made earrings. They were, they were out of condoms. 
You didn't know that when you had them. People would see them like, oh, those are great. Puff paint. She draw them on the front. Oh, those are beautiful. Those are nice, especially the Halloween ones. And then everybody got a kick because when they were wearing them, they knew the person looking at them didn't know that they were condoms. So they had their own little joke in store for them. Oh, look at that. Why do you only have one, one earring on? Um, it was, let me tell you how awesome it was as a 12 year old to go to Walmart when your mom bought three boxes of 36 count of Trojans. Good times. <clears throat> All right. Take a drink of water first. So mom passed away on May the 6th, 2021, at the age of... <laughs> <laughs> she was born... In Cincinnati, Ohio, on July 3rd, nine, something, to her fun loving parents, Richard and Mabel Stillmaker. By the way, this is um, an obituary. Um, oh, wait, is it a eulogy? Allie, which one is this? Sorry, anyone that wants to tell my niece what the difference is? This is a mixture of both. So it's a history and, an, and, and a eulogy. But hopefully, there'll be some entertainment, Allie. They were, her parents were both entrepreneurs who owned and operated a bakery and an arcade. Their houses were full of music and entertainment, along with the latest gadgets, such as one of the first color televisions. She enjoyed singing along to the piano and cruising the drive throughs with her friends in her bright red 1957 Chevrolet convertible. I'll also tell you that Jeff and I were able to write probably 80, 90% of this together. <laughs> that is spot on. Mom did love Louis Armstrong. <clears throat> it's not Ray Charles. After high school, she found careers in both radio and industry. She worked at WLW Radio in Cincinnati, one of the most powerful AM stations in the country. That's why you heard the WKRP in Cincinnati song earlier. She loved that. Um, fun fact, the tower was designed and built by the same company that made the one for WSM down there in Brentwood. Afterwards, while working at Procter & Gamble, she was part of teams that invented new products and help perfect Pringles newfangled chips. Not long after her mutual friends introduced them at a party, she married her husband of 53 years, dad, on August the 28th, 1967. His name was convenient as Jeff and I would also call him dad. <laughs> they moved from since. <laughs> you staying up with me here, dad? You keeping up? All right. They moved from Cincinnati to Atlanta to Nashville, then to Little Rock, and then uh, back finally to Brentwood in 1975. After raising, <laughs> after raising her two exceptional, near-perfect, godlike sons, <laughs> her words totally, according to Jeff, she helped found the Brentwood Chamber of Commerce. She served as the executive assistant for many years, and was honored as a life member upon her retirement. She was also a talented artist who excelled in both oil and watercolor paintings, uh, some of which I brought today, so hopefully you got to see that. She also created that calendar. Uh, she had one for Jeff, one for me. She's a super talented artist. Um, I did not get any of that. Um, Jeff was also a very, very talented artist. She was also a member of the Red Hat Society, a founding member, a host of Brentwood Sister Cities, a dedicated volunteer at the Martin Center, FLIP, which was a reading program for kids, canine candy stripers, and more and more and more. She was very involved. And she was also the unofficial mayor of Brenhaven as appointed by her neighbors, and she has a hat to prove it. 
Throughout her life, mom was always known as the life of the party. Uh, she never met a stranger and made a fun and unique impression wherever she went, often to the embarrassment of her two young sons. I distinctly remember uh, recalling her dancing on top of a table during a neighborhood party while I begged her to get off. That is an absolute true story. I was about this old and mortified that mom, I, I mean, she got up there and the table held her and she didn't fall. Um, and she may have been encouraged by a little bit of vodka, I don't know. So all very impressive feats to see your mom, except you were also incredibly embarrassed. She was also a constant teacher who pushed, encouraged, and held those around her to a high standard so they could be a productive member of society and a better person. Some quotes you would often hear mom say were, common goals are the key to a successful relationship. That's my opinion and it ought to be yours. <laughs> Do the right thing, it's not that hard to understand. That actually got printed in a paper and I've got a little clipping on my fridge. I don't know who she told that to, but they took a picture and put it in the paper. Um, say what you mean and mean what you say. And then one that sticks out to me and I know Jeff, do it now. And it wasn't yelled at us, do it now. It was encouraging, do it now. And that can't be three more poignant words to me. because you just never know. I am proud to pass along her values and high standards to my children. And if you say to Mason and Chloe, it's worth, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. It's worth doing right. So mom, you live in many generations in my kids, in Jeff's kids, and in so many strangers, whether you're getting off of a horse and now you're all of a sudden her best friend, or so many other occurrences. And just to check the obituary part, mom is preceded in death by her parents, three siblings, and a bunch of other people she didn't know but would have talked to and is survived by everyone else in the world, including five people she didn't get the chance to teach something to. So now I'd like to talk about my brother Jeff. You'd think this would be easier because I've, I've essentially done this last weekend. I don't know if that's going to be the case, but Jeff was born in Little Rock on the 12th of April, 1969, only five years prior to me, and as we both knew, 30 years prior to the chosen one, Dugan, our family dog. We were both grieved, but yet sighed some relief when he passed away before us because we knew he was probably going to get everything. <laughs> to our fun-loving mom, Mary Lou, and the salt of the earth, Dad Bernie, who balanced each other in raising this driven spirit we know as Jeff. We moved to Brentwood in 1975, and both mom and dad were respected members of the community. Both... Uh, Mom and dad, not always Jeff and I, but mom and dad were respected members of the community. Mom started the Brentwood Chamber, as you know, uh, while dad was the agent in charge of the Nashville branch of the DEA. This presented problems for Jeff to get away with much unnoticed. <laughs> but in true fashion, he enjoyed the challenge and took it on headstrong. I'm excited to hear some of the stories that I've never heard by some of you that knew him, so please do share. While living in Brentwood, Jeff went to Lipscomb Elementary, Northside Middle, and was in the first four-year graduating class of Brentwood High School. For college, he attended the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, 
And Jeff, as I said earlier, was a talented artist and creative builder who always stayed curious and hungry to learn. He once built a battery-operated Lego machine just to shake his mini tester's paint bottles when he made models, which then mom, in true mom fashion, proceeded to super glue together because he took everything apart that he built and then got upset that he couldn't take it apart because they were all super glued together. But that was mom. Professionally, Jeff was extremely driven and respected. True to form, he was never satisfied with second best. He strove to work harder than anyone, overcome any challenge to the best he could, and motivate those around him. Over his career, he influenced thousands of coworkers. There's a, a binder out there that his uh, latest uh, group of coworkers at um, Altman's put together, and there's just some really nice things um, that they said about him in there if you get a chance. Um, now I've lost my spot. I should have put this in 16 point. Um, never satisfied. He, was, he always worked harder than anyone. He didn't want to be second best. He strove to work harder than anyone, overcome any challenge to the best he could, and motivate those around him. Over his career, he influenced thousands of coworkers. Many of you who are here today um, that were there last week as well. He created and improved countless programs, and after 23 years, eight cities, and seven positions with Home Depot, he started a new chapter with Cabela's in Lacey, Washington, as a GM of their legacy store for three and a half years. And then when an opportunity to return to live goods retail presented itself, Jeff took a leadership position with Altman Plants, where he most recently was in San Antonio, Texas where I think it's safe to say he was greatly adored by everyone he worked with. That was the easy part. As a brother, say Jeff was someone I looked up that's ah, all blurry <laughs> should have memorized my lines Jeff was someone I looked up to and often counseled when important decisions were being made we didn't fight much since we were five years apart, but that didn't mean Jeff didn't terrorize me. From hiding under my bed for well over an hour for a simple joke, just to scare the crap out of me by making ghost sounds and reaching up around and touching me. <laughs> he was a dedicated craftsman when it came to terror. <laughs> to insane gift wrapping techniques, that we both like to trade back and forth, sometimes passing on to his kids, where he gave me a safe one time and proceeded to wrap it in wood and nails and Gorilla Glue and all kinds of other things. I think it was New Year's before I got it open. Um, to filling his more gullible brother's head with lies. Um, there was more than one occasion where he convinced me that there were sharks and barracuda and eels, even in swimming pools. And no matter how quick I looked over the raft, they were just a little quicker than me. So a trip that I went when I was about 12 to my aunt's house to swim in her pool and spend some time turned into just spending some time. <laughs> but Jeff always kept things fun and interesting like a big brother should. Despite the endless emotional counseling that I later needed, we always united through endless pranks directed at our trusting mom, as you can see. Our love for each other was obvious as we continually found ways
to have fun together while sharing a mutual respect for the adults we had become. All right, not so bad. As a husband, from day one, Jeff showed the abundance of strength and courage he would put forth toward every challenging opportunity. He was meticulous in all aspects of his life, and Sherry quickly realized she would have to up her organizational game <laughs> as the unfolded, unmatched sock drawer would no longer be acceptable. <laughs> Jeff's love language was acts of service. He taught Sherry patience as he was the master builder of all of her wild and outrageous ideas. His architectural precision could not be rushed. Sherry's high energy, coupled with Jeff's drive for life, led them on a whirlwind of life adventures across the United States. With Jeff as the railroad conductor, leading the way filled with laughter and excitement, he provided an action-packed lifestyle wherever they went. Jeff's mostly known for his endearing moments as her knight in shining armor always swooped in to save the day, no matter the task. He was truly Mr. Fist Fix It in all aspects. At the end of the day, when you love someone, what you did and didn't miss become very blurred. Feeling like this isn't the right page, but I'm going to wing it here. <laughs> what you did and didn't miss become very blurred. I wish that I could have spent more time with Jeff. I hated that we didn't live closer, but I loved getting to spend time with him and my nieces and nephew. He and I spent the last few months reconnecting in a deeper way than we had in a long time. And I think that's the last gift that mom gave. That mom gave her two sons. She held on just long enough for us to realize that. I'm still trying to figure out what Jeff's death is supposed to mean or to teach me. I have some thoughts, but as mom would say, and as Jeff clearly lived, do it now. Thank you. talked about being able to share, share stories and just over the, the 24 hours that he was back in town for mom before everything happened, he shared a number of things that I didn't even remember myself. So um, time is fleeting. So in so many ways, looking out across here, all of you harbor memories that I don't have yet that I hope I will because you have the opportunity to share it with me. 
Um, Allie, would you like to come up or maybe we'll skip ahead for a moment? This is Allie, Jeff's oldest daughter. Nuts and bolts that are giant. Those were cool. Uh, 
that was the end part, they're practical, but no clue what we'd use them for. But they're giant bowls, that's cool. Um, yard, work, days. Yeah. Um, now these are awesome, as everyone should know, because when Dad texts the family group chat, Michael Dash or Aaron Dash, can I sit here for just one hour and help with the yard? We can translate that to that use, and it usually means cancel your plans for the rest of the day because you will not be doing anything else, and this will be your life for the next couple hours. But in the end, we always got it nice and good how we wanted. Working alongside Dad was always like that. One thing leads into another thing, and in the end, you've accomplished more than what you set out to do, and it leaves you feeling like you've done something productive. My dad never gave me a reason to cry or be upset. Sure, there were times that the stupid, the, man, there's a story about some shops I should tell you about. That'll be later. Ah, the stupid shops made me really mad, but that's okay. Um, that shouldn't have taken all day, and I don't have to cancel plans with friends. And sure, I was mad at him, but I never was sad or upset. Maybe I thought for a long time, uh, not, maybe I didn't think for long enough, jeez. Uh, but I can't think of a time that he was really, ever really mad at me either. Except for when we lived in Houston and I drank too much water because instead of eating breakfast that day, you just keep drinking water. And you know, if you drink too much water, you throw up. And so my target of throw up was on him and the family iPad. Uh, so, maybe not the greatest area to projectile vomit. Um, but, yeah, that's besides the point. Uh, Dad is the greatest man I will ever know, and there's nobody in the universe that could replace him. Yeah, it's a big old giant heck of a humongous bummer, insert more big words, that uh, his widespread knowledge of absolutely everything and answer to every question you ever had is in here, but the amount of knowledge he absorbed to give back to people, like my sisters and mom, uh, I know I can learn what he always wanted me to know through them. Dad hugs are the best, you know. Um, as a wee lad, I would jump up on his chest and rub my face all over his scruffy beard. And for some reason, a couple months ago, as a 15-year-old boy, I did the same thing. <laughs> um, might sound a little weird, but we were there, and it was happening, so no question. But I can let you know that the dad's scruffy beard was the, place, the best place to scratch face to face. I was told only five minutes for this thing. Well, actually, I got up to two for this. Um, I did cut out the shock story, but that'll be later. Um, or a couple of years if you want to hear it. Um, for this thing, or whatever I was saying to you, uh, I'm just going to continue because I have a little bit more. I'm sorry. Uh, might be wondering why I had the immigrant song play as, a, as I walked up here, or after I stood up here. And that's because I distinctly remember that song playing in the movie Thor Ragnarok, which is indeed a Marvel movie, if you didn't know that. Um, any DC fans, you can raise your hand. Dude, what are you doing? Go Matthew. It's not teaching them very well. Um, I love Marvel movies because ever since we moved, I, well, it says here, but in Texas, uh, every Friday, as soon as Friday, that any Marvel movie would come out, we'd go out on the motorcycle, I would ride on the back, and we'd drive it, because um, I can't touch the ground on it. Uh, it's not the only reason why I didn't drive it, but yeah, and then we'd go to the movie, we'd see the movie, and it was Marvel, so of course it was good. Um, and then, you know, good old, let oh, me go backtrack. This is, this is the funny part. Uh, you gotta protect your legs, so I'd wait until he got home from work, and I would grab the popcorn buckets for the good old starkle, staple, sack, stale, or starplex, as it was actually called, depending on which light was burned out. Um, and then I'd hop on the back of the bike, and he'd take us to the AMC theater, named Starplex, or any other name list that you can make out of those letters. And we'd watch each new Marvel movie that came out, and he would tell me all these facts about the characters and stuff that he knew from the comics as he would read, read as a kid. And so I got some extra insight. That's all I can think of right now. No, this wasn't on the spot. This is me thinking right after I got out of an hour-long shower typing for yet another hour sitting on my toilet in my notes section freestyle me there. Anyways, I love you, Dad. Even though I never said it to your face, I do. I know I'll miss you every day, specifically the days I will need you, but in the end, it all turns out all right because of you. Anyways, if anybody has any hotel cards here, I have a collection ongoing of any trip he went out to, you bring back his hotel cards, 
305 is the count, then I got another one, and then now, now that we're staying here, it's probably like, I don't know, 310. So if anybody has hotel cards, because I know a lot of you are staying in the hotel, you don't have to be back to the hotel. I can, I can take one. Uh, Alright, well, that was me. Uh, if I was come up here. Oh, Spamma!
stressed and overwhelmed with everything um, he had going on this year or any year. Um, but he had never failed to make me and my siblings and I feel better.
spend the last four years in his favorite city in the world, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I am honored to have been a part of making him proud. And so happy that he got to spend his last week in Pittsburgh with the whole family, with all of our favorite friends. Because I know he would have had any way. I am going to miss very many things about my dad. But he's just a few. I'm going to miss having someone to call when something breaks in my car. <laughs> or something in general breaks. I need guidance on how to fix something, or just reassurance that I can fix it the right way. I was saying to call him to tell him that I showed up a guy in fixing something. Faster, better, or more efficiently. Or to let him know that a guy was doing something completely wrong, and I corrected him. Nothing made him look proud of this moment. I noticed the intense and rigorous approval process that any guy that dared to be friends or even a boyfriend of one of us girls had to go through and was subject to. There were many work days involved. Uh, I will miss all the work days in the garage as much as I dreaded them as a kid and all the yard days where he was honestly his happiest. But mostly I'm going to miss the laughter. Many of you in this room know the cackle sound he makes when he gets really going. From riding mattresses down the stairs to Monopoly nights, letting us put flippies in his hair, snowball fights, and tickle spiders that can only be captured if you jump on them and sit on them. And letting us jump into piles of packing paper with every move from the balcony, which probably wasn't safe, but we did it anyway. <laughs> Nerf gun wars and close up camera where he would take the most god awful pictures of us. He is dearly missed and will always be. Now, I truly believe that my dad was not who he was without his mother, my baby, who we're also here to honor today. She taught him everything that I believe he passed on to us. From little things like proper grammar and not saying like, because that's a bad one. Having manicured nails and being a polished young woman. She passed that along. And so they shared some awesome memories with me because we would, she would take grandpa out of bed every time we came to visit and grandpa had to sleep upstairs. And he and Samantha would sleep with her and we'd snuggle and we'd have girl talk all night long. And that was a few times that we weren't actually in charge of going to bed before you could yeah. Maybe you would let us stay until the morning. But she also let us come into the house and the kids and trash the house. We got to trash the house. We could play with anything. We could make food. We could learn how to play games, card games, board games. She was it. And I wish there was more I could stand up here and say about me. But I will make it through that. Um, I very will make it through that. So I'm going to leave you with this with a little message to that. Because I wish I could have got to talk to him one more time. It has been an honor to be your daughter and to be your neighbor.
later on, she goes, boy, I let you off easy. I'm like, yeah, you did, thank you. Thank you, because I don't know what I would have said to her. But, um, but she really, there were times when I felt like she made things hard for me, but they were really teaching lessons and learning lessons to help me be better, help me be a better wife, help me be a better mother, and so many things. And she just really, um, like Savannah said, was the light in the room, like that chandelier. She was always smiling, always happy. Um, it was just a really nice time. Um, one story, we were coming off of Cool Springs Boulevard, and uh, we made the turn onto the Whatever that street is, you know, that one right there. Um, it goes by Brothers, Brothers. What's that? Help me out there. It doesn't matter. Okay. And we ran out of gas. And we had to coast through like five stoplights. And we knew that the automotive place was on the end. And we literally, the, we're two babies in the car. And we're just coasting. And it's summer and it's hot. It's just like, I oh, hope to God there's a handsome man there. Um, when we get there, and that you can sweet talk to go over and get us some gas. <laughs> and I'm like, why do I need to do it? You're still pretty hot yourself, you know? And so she ended up getting us gas. That, that we, but we got really lucky because we just kind of coasted in uh, to where we landed. But it was so funny. But Shannon had so many fun laughter stories together. Um, and we just miss her, miss her so much. Um, and that just kind of led into Jeff's humor and with, with Matthew constantly, you know, giving each other a hard time, you know, their entire life. And she loved all those practical, practical jokes and it was wonderful. Um, for most people, I, well, you may or may not know, I've known Jeff since second grade. There's several people in here I've known since second grade. And I didn't always like him. I'm going to lie, and I really don't like him right now. Mm -hmm. uh, which is not true. I do. And I'm not angry at God or anything like that. And people are like, how are you doing this? Because I feel like before you come in, you, your soul knows what you're coming here to do. So he knew what he was coming to do. So he came here and he gave each and every one of you everything you possibly ever had. He gave you inspiration, he gave you words, he gave you wisdom, he gave you laughter, he gave you friendship, so many things. And he gave us all each other, look at all these people in this room, just as many in Texas. And he came here and gave every ounce of everything he had left. So he did his job. He did his job well. So it really stinks that he's not with us any longer, but he gave each and every one of you something to take away with. Right? Going back to God, what is it that you're going to share that someone taught you that you're going to pass on to the next person? What is it? There's a lot. There's a lot that he gave us to pass on. He gave us these four beautiful children that are just going to go and inspire the entire world. They're going to keep making me of my game now, but um, every day is a learning lesson for us. I can handle this. And 
Then the second one was most recently on the day of just passing. And what are the chances that Allie and I were actually here in town when that happened? I mean, uh, God has a lot of interesting things that he puts in place to protect us, right? And so we were at the hospital and Matthew was there. And um, he was by my side and so was Allie. I think um, the most awful moment of my entire life was experienced with him. Because our path of our family was in Texas. <laughs> and we were, half of us were here. And we had to this time. The children that were at home to take them.
know, tell yourself thank you for all those little things that you didn't do. And the third thing is, is the enduring physical touch, the enduring physical touch of human touch. I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about holding my hand, holding my arm, letting me lean on your shoulder, all those things. What? finally broke the news to her. Uh, I don't know if they ever did, because I feel like she was still telling that when I was growing up. But in some conversation Jeff and I had, she talked about having fireworks at her, at her funeral when she passed. So we're going to blow this place. No, I'm, uh, <laughs> don't worry, I, I paid the deposit. I guess that's gone. We've got outside, whenever you do leave, hopefully that's not now, we've got a couple of sparklers with a little picture of mom on it with the phrase that I hope you will always remember, do it now. As what Sherry said and shared, the things you miss, the things you take for granted, she instilled that in my brother and I, and he lived it a lot, and I try to live it every day. The Clint and I had a conversation about it today. And so please take those couple of sparklers. They don't last forever. So light them, think of mom, think of your own mom, think of somebody you care about, and enjoy it either later tonight or tomorrow, <clears throat> but realize that's not going to burn forever, so do it now. And on another note, because as you may also be aware, Jeff was also a fan of Mr. Daniels. Uh, if any of you went to Lipscomb Elementary when you were younger, there was Mr. Frank, the principal. Only principal I know that when you're in elementary school, he takes you on a tour down to Lynchburg to Jack Daniels. So I guess he was destined to like Jack Daniels if you're going on a tour in, you know, fourth grade or whatever it was. So we have the little mini Jack Daniels that we have plenty at the bar. I, I'm sure at dinner um, we'll have a toast to Jeff because we have plenty of that as well. But please take one of those with you. There's some different phrases and sayings that Jeff had. And when you take 
a time to take that shot whenever you want. Take a look at that card. Think of those things and think of Jeff. But thank you again for being here. Dinner's in the back. And please enjoy yourself. Spend as much time as you like. And I hope to talk to him. Thank you.